Today, I've got a new play for you that I have not brought forward to the channel before. Let's also check up on some cryptos. I haven't checked crypto in quite a while. Uh, if you want to see the weekly closes video going over the weekly closes for our favorite Bitcoin miners, as well as Bitcoin, check yesterday's video. I'll link that here uh, as a note on the video in just a moment. So first of all, this first one is SoFi. I'm sure you've probably heard of SoFi. It's a fintech company, currently kind of valued like more like a bank than fintech. So they are uh, currently down on some lows right now, uh, hanging out honestly at the bottom of their range. And there's a reason for it. There's a reason for that. There's a couple of reasons for that, actually. We're going to take a look at those and then we're going to look at the chart and we're going to um, see what is possible here with this stock. So let's get into it. First of all, let me start here with this. This is from last month, March 5th, 2024. SoFi slumps on plan to sell $862.5 million in convertible bonds. Now, this is the same method that Michael Saylor over at MicroStrategy has been using in order to increase their, um, their funds so that they can buy more Bitcoin. Now, I don't think SoFi is buying Bitcoin with it, but it's the same method. He's using convertible bonds in order to, in order to get cheap debt that he can then use to grow business. Um, SoFi is doing the same thing. So this is not the same as dilution because these these bonds may or may not be converted, and that doesn't happen until March 2029. So in March 2029, we could potentially see dilution from this, but we aren't seeing it now. Right now, it's kind of like a loan. The, the people are buying bonds in, in SoFi. So it's a bit of a overcorrection, overcorrection, as you can see on that day. The day after, it dropped 13%. We can see that on the chart. That was actually this day here, where you have this big... Let me zoom in on it, actually. These two days here. So it was here on the uh, the 4th and the 5th when that came out. And that was a drop, total drop of, from the very top of the 5th, 4th, excuse me. Uh, it was a over 20% drop just off of that news that they were issuing convertible bonds, not even actual dilution. They were just taking on some uh, cheap debt in the form of convertible bonds. And since then, we've kind of hung out near the bottom of that range and been, have been struggling to get above it. But if you look here, we are forming something of a head and shoulders right here. You can see the shoulder here from March uh, 5th to the 8th. And then on the, the middle of March 15th and to the 20th, we got the head. And then now we're currently forming the other shoulder. And this green line that I've drawn here, this one right here, this is the neckline for that inverted head and shoulders. So once we get above this, I'm expecting to go back to the top of this range somewhere around $8 or so from where we currently are. And ultimately, if we can get up and above nine twenty, dollars uh, we'll, we'll be looking at about $9.80 to $10 on SoFi. Now, this could also be a bear flag since we've come to the head and shoulders here and we are forming... Uh, uh, right now, we're forming a series of higher highs and higher lows, actually. So that's actually good. But if we were to break this, the, the structure of this higher highs, higher lows on the daily time frame here, we could potentially break down to about $6.41 or potentially come lower to this gap fill down here. Well, there's two actually, two gap fills, one at $6 and another one at $5.40 on SoFi. So that's the downside potential. The downside potential is about $2 max. Upside potential though is like three, four, even more, depending on uh, your, your time horizon and outlook here. But this inverse head and shoulders, that would end around $9. That's where that inverse head and shoulders would start either flagging or trying to turn around on it is around that $9, $9 range. Uh, if we get we start to flag and get up above that, though, we'd be looking around $10, uh, possibly even $11 on SoFi. Now, let's take a look at the uh, moving averages here. Let me just get rid of some of this excess I've got left on the chart. Let's see where they sit in terms of moving averages and volume profile. So on the daily, moving averages, we just got a green arrow here on here. This is a green arrow that came after a red dot. So the red dot is the 15 crossing over the 50. And I believe this is the 15 still, or do I have it on a 20? I have it on the 20. So that's the 20. That's even, it's even more so. All right, let me turn it to 15. All right, 15. So we got the red dot, uh, and then we got the green arrow here, and we kind of failed on it and are coming up. But if we make it into the 20, which honestly, with if I'm not day trading, if I'm doing more of a swing, I do prefer the 20 versus the 15. So let me get the 20 on there since this is going to be a longer term thing. Uh, we just got the green arrow on the 
the 5 crossing up over the 20, which indicates that we likely want to come up at least and test the top of this red candle here before moving back down. We'll see how Monday opens. That will give us a hint as to whether or not we're going to see that or not. These wicks on the bottom of the candles are giving me a bit of an indication that it would like to do something like that, but this was a doji, so it is indecision right now. We are hanging out at this very intense level of volume right on it, actually. If we zoom in here, we are at the we are hanging out just above the longest uh, little, little line here on the volume profile with a bit of a gap up to 746. And then once we get up and over 758, it's really kind of clear skies up until we get to around $8. So there's not a lot in the way here. And that would be really the only obstacle in our way right now between us currently and getting up to $8 is the 50 SMA. If we hit this 50 SMA flag and go above it, we're likely to go to the 200 SMA at around 824, which would again pose a threat to us getting up and through this volume profile on the right here. And once we get up above 835, we're really looking at clear skies up to about $10 on SoFi. So let's take a look at some more information about SoFi. So one of the reasons it's been dropping a lot lately is because Insider selling is one thing. You can see here there was one, two, three, four, five on uh, March 15th, five different filings for insider selling on the 15th of March. And then also, and again, on the 19th of March. Let's see what happened on those days. Let me turn off my SMAs real quick. Let's see, the 15th of March, right here, 14th. And then they, they filed it this day. So they probably didn't sell it this day because there was actually a lot of buying happening on those days, as you can see from these long wicks on the bottom. They probably did some selling here after this big green candle here, and then around 750, probably did some selling down to $7, and then again, when we got this big spike up to 772, that got beat down pretty hard. That is also probably their selling from that, uh, from those 144s. Now, when they file the 144, they don't need to sell them right away. It's just a, a, a warning that at any time after this day, we're going to be making sales on this stock if we so please. Uh, so that's what we're looking at with that. And I think a lot of this hanging out here at the bottom is insider selling and then trying to recover from that news a few uh, a month ago with the convertible bonds. And once that starts to shake out and we can get above this green uh, descending trend line here, which is the neckline for this inverse head and shoulders, we will be moving up pretty quickly on this stock. Let's take a look at market beat and see what it has to say about this. So insiders are selling. That's not great. Short interest. Ooh, short interest is a 23%. That is actually huge. Anything over 10% short interest is actually really, really primed for a short squeeze. So having 23% short interest if we get a move up on this stock not even a big one like if we get up into like the high sevens low eights again that could be a 23 percent squeeze which as you know with a short squeeze it goes way higher than just the 23 percent that would be a big big move if we got a short squeeze on there with 23 percent let's say we broke broke this neckline just the 23 percent alone goes up to the top of this chart right that would be up at 950 just from the short interests getting called, not to mention the, the euphoria that would catch on in a short squeeze and likely take us honestly to the top of the chart here, probably the, the $11 range again, if we got a short squeeze on this. Now, I don't own this yet. Full disclosure, I don't own this yet. I am just watching it right now. I'm looking to potentially get into it soon, but I'm not in it now. And of course, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. This video is for informational purposes and entertainment purposes only. You must do your own research and come to your own conclusions regarding any assets that I discuss on this channel. So this one is quite interesting to me in that respect. I think price is low currently. It has been beaten down. There is high short interest that is just primed for uh, an upside upset on these short on these shorts that could send this thing flying up. Look at this, projected earnings growth is 257%. That, that's massive. If they actually delivered on that on earnings, which is coming up here on April 29th, if they can deliver on even a fraction of that, we're gonna squeeze these shorts likely. Um, and even analysts are seeing a 22.7% upside to $9 on this stock. So that's really quite interesting. Uh, one more piece of information I'd like to talk about with SoFi, I need to go to the mobile version of Weeble here for that, going over to the Sage Tracker on SoFi. Let me get to it. All right, the Sage Tracker on SoFi. 
we come down to ownership here and we can see that the top owners are all the owners I like to see. Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, they're all in the top four. Uh, Silver Lake is also there. I don't know who they are, but they are big. And they, in, they're big into this stock. Uh, anyways, the other thing I like to see about this is their average price paid for SoFi on Vanguard. Their average price paid is $13.50. For BlackRock, it is $11.12. For State Street, it is $10.80. Five cents. You see the theme there? All of these big, big players are severely underwater on their SoFi stocks right now. So they also own, Vanguard owns 8% of the company, BlackRock 4%, State Street 1.6%, Silver Lake 3%. Again, I don't know who they are. Uh, so Vanguard owns over $800 million into this stock that they are underwater on by almost 50% per share. So they put more than a billion dollars into this thing. All right, BlackRock is in it for over $400 million. They are also getting cl getting close to that minus 50% level on this. State Street, $160 million into this at a much higher price than it currently is. They are all severely underwater in this, so they have a vested interest in this thing eventually going up so they can recoup these costs. Let's take a look at the company profile real quick in terms of... Um, institutions versus insiders versus retail. So institutions own 38% of this, insiders own 5%, and corporation owns 5.82%. So that's about 10% insiders, which I usually don't like and would take me off of this. But in the case that the biggest investment firms in the world are underwater on this, uh, with a 23% short interest and an inverse head and shoulders, along with analysts saying there's a potential for a 22% upside. I am feeling more confident about it than uh, this concerns me in terms of that being at that 10% level. So basically, institutions are heavy into it. There's a lot of short interest on it. There is potential to move up, which could cause a short squeeze. So I am watching. Like I said, I am watching. I'm not in it yet. I am watching to see if the candles I want to see that show me that we are going up start coming in and convince me like, yes, I have the confidence and I can move on this at that time, but that time is not quite yet. Uh, anyways, retail owns about 50% of this. Let's see institutions. Let's see who's been buying and selling lately. So the last reported buying and selling on the stock was back in February, February 29th to be exact. JP Morgan added 2% to their holdings. Vanguard uh, lowered it by 0.09%, so like almost nothing. Uh, the one that was really interesting in here that I saw was that, here we go, BlackRock on February 29th, they doubled down on their positions. So that's pretty pretty great there. I like seeing that they did that. Uh, most others either added a little bit, some doubled down, a couple doubled down on their positions in February, I'm sure, because they were down. And they're doubling down for the move up. Lots of people didn't do anything or very slight selling uh, to recoup probably some <laughs> of their losses from that. So that's SoFi right now. It's very uh, an, an, an interesting stock in an interesting position right now. Lots of things going on with that. Let's move over to some crypto. Now, this is actually what I'll tell you about in a minute. Let's look at Solana first. So I haven't talked about Solana in a little bit. Solana is up near the highs here. It is, uh, does look like on a daily, especially if we were to switch this over, not to a three day, to a weekly, we'd see that this kind of looks a lot like a flag. This is, this is flagging up here on the weekly between the price of 202 and about where we currently are at 178, 177. This is a flag. Now, if we can get up and above 202, I'd say that we're probably going for the highs at $260 on Solana. That would be, and then right now we're just sitting at the bottom of this ascending channel. And if we can just get right back into this channel, up we go. And if we get above that 202 level, which these are all just sitting on, like, let me draw a box. This is the box right here, basically. Boom, that's it, that's the flag. If we can get up and above this, this box right here, we're going, we're going to all time highs on Solana. Now, again, this is not financial advice and not a suggestion to buy, sell, or hold any assets whatsoever. It's simply what I see when I look at this chart and what I'm reporting about when I look at the chart. Okay, one day, let's go to the one day. So we were in this descending channel for a little while. We just broke out of it. I say breakout, but like, it's not much of a breakout. It's very weak. This could easily come back into it. Look how flat that candle is. It could easily, easily come back into this descending channel. But right now we have broken away from it, meaning that there is a little bit of pressure to move this thing back up into this ascending channel, which 
like I said before, if we can get above this 202 level, we are likely to come back to that previous high of 210. And once we conquer that, 260 is on the way. So we are in a bit of a pennant as well. That's not the best place to be. You can see that we are making lower highs, but we are also making higher lows at the same time. Uh, so there we go. And it's doing something like, okay. It's a very long, it's going to be a very long skinny cone on this thing. So we're kind of just in that zone right now. We need to break away to this either to the upside or the downside. Uh, I feel like since we are so close to the halving, it'll likely be an upside move. We'll see when that time comes. But if we get below, if we go below 168, we are very quickly going to go to 162. If we get underneath 162, we are going to go back down to, to 150. That's the next level, as you can see from the box here. So 162 has to hold. It's got to hold. Otherwise, we are coming down to the 150 area. And if that doesn't hold, we're coming back down to about 130-ish, where we have a little bit of support. And then ultimately, strong, strong supports down at 120, where the la was the last time we had like this same sort of price action that we are looking at right now, where things were getting lower, um, lower highs, lower lows. And then we started making slightly higher highs and higher lows. Like We want to see it come out like this here. Actually, we want to see exactly this right now. We want to see maybe a wick up from a depressed price and then a new high that takes out the previous swing high and then a low that is above that low. So right now we want to see price break from this, come up, get above 204 and then not come back down to 167. That's what we want to see right now. That's what we're looking for. But we are flagging right now on Solana. Uh, my Bias is to the upside since we're so close to the halving, since we're so close to uh, a supply shock with Bitcoin, which will cause whichever coins move in alignment with Bitcoin to fly up with up there, just like Ethereum did last cycle. I think Solana will, will likely do that this cycle, will be the one that is staying more correlated with Bitcoin or potentially even um, outperforming Bitcoin going forward here on this. The other one I wanted to talk about, and then this is the last one I want to talk about today. It's SEI. S -E -I. It is a new crypto. It's only been around since August 15th of 2023. So their whole thing is that they are fast. Let me go here. They are really, really fast. They're doing 12,000 and 12 and a half thousand transactions per second versus Solana's 2,798. Now, I know that is going to grow exponentially once Fire Dancer gets online, but it currently is not online. So currently, SEI is faster than Solana for the time being. But the thing that they're really all about is this time to finality. So the thing that Say wants to do is they want to be the NASDAQ of the blockchain of the crypto space. Basically, they want to have um, organizations build DEXs on top of their black blockchain. On top of their blockchain, that's what they want to have. So uh, in terms of time to finality, now this is a bit old. I don't have updated numbers on this. This is the most updated numbers I was able to find. If you can find better numbers than this for time to finality on Ethereum and Solana, I would love to have it or know where to find it. But this is what I was able to find in the limited time that I contributed to the research on this. So please... Don't absolutely roast me in the comments for this because this is a bit older. And if you have better information, I would love to have it because I looked for it and I was unable to find it. Anyways, Solana is six and a half seconds from the time that a trade is made to the time that it is completed. So regardless of transactions per second, it's going to take six and a half seconds to, to say that a trade has completed fully. For say, that is 380 milliseconds. That is exceptionally fast compared to Solana. The other thing that is interesting about Say is who invests in it. For one, Coinbase. Coinbase is a competitor to SEI and they bought it. They invested in it. That speaks volumes about this project, uh, given that Coinbase is interested and interested enough to invest in it. Uh, there are some theories behind that. Um, basically, Coinbase is a publicly traded company now and there are things that they cannot dabble with and say is not and they are able to do those things that like they can get their hands on some they can get their some exposure to certain aspects of the crypto market that coinbase no longer can being a publicly traded company so that is some uh, of the thought process behind why can't coinbase is investing in some competitors like that you also have all these other ones here delphi digital circle multi-coin capital and jump those are all venture capitalists in the crypto space. Now, I know a lot of crypto investors don't like venture capitalists, but they do represent big money. So <laughs> basically, big money means 
big dollar value on this at some point in the future. Now, of course, that's not guaranteed. None of this is guaranteed, but we try to hedge our bets with information. So I actually already bought some say, all right? I bought this in at 82 cents. Uh, currently we are trading at 72 cents. So I'm 10 cents per coin down on this bad boy right now, but that's okay. I'm willing to hold this thing until the end of 2025 if I, if I have to. So when I analyze this chart right now, we are seeing that we did go into a pretty steep dive here just over the last two weeks or so on this descending channel here, but we have now broken out of it. If we can stay out of this channel for a couple of days, I would say that we're probably gonna come back and test that 89, 90 cent level on this thing, right about right here, well, maybe even actually right here. I'll put it right there, about 90 cents. That's what I'm looking at if we can stay out of this descending channel for the next couple of days. Uh, if we can conquer that 90 cent level, that's where our resistance is gonna be. If we can conquer that, we are looking at going back up to $1.05 below us. So below us, we have some support, which is where we flipped around at, at 67 cents. If we cannot hold 67 cents, we're looking at 57 cents. If we can't hold 57 cents, it's going to be a big old drop down to this little box down here uh, around 39 and 35 cents. So right now, our current support could be at 67 cents. It could revisit 67 cents before carrying on back up. If it just goes up from here, we're looking at, there's a little bit of resistance right here. You can see where we flagged on the way down. There's a bit of resistance right here at the 80 to 82 cent range. And then once we're above that, we're looking at 90 cents, above 90 cents, $1.05. And the all-time high currently is $1.14 on this thing. I do think it can, it can go significantly higher. There are, what, 2 billion coins on this thing? Let's look at coin market cap. Let me bring it up real quick. All right. So, yeah, we've got, it's currently got a $1.949 billion market cap. There is a max supply of 10 billion, current circulating supply of 2.67 billion. So every two, basically every two and a half billion dollars in this thing is going to represent a dollar. So if you get up to $10 billion, we're looking at a $5 coin. That's, that's not bad. Honestly, I'd probably sell with that kind of a return. Now, as we know with these things, sometimes they get big. Like if this thing just got the market cap of Solana, which is at uh, $79 billion, let's just call it 80 for the ease of doing math. So we got 80 billion. We're going to represent that by 80,000. And we're going to divide that by two and a half, well, two, six. We'll do it properly. 2,600, that's how many coins currently are in circulation. We'd be looking at $30. That'd be a $30 SEI coin uh, if it can reach the current market cap of Solana. I'm not saying that it will. I'm not saying that it can. The potential could be there. That, that's all. Can I get rid of this history? Why is this showing up here? doesn't matter. Uh, which would represent a significant increase from now, over a 30x from its current position. Now, that's only if it can do that. Um, it might only get up to market cap of, what, of like Cardano, like 20 billion or something, which in this case, we'd be looking at 20,000 representing that divided by 2,600 for that. It'd be about seven and a half dollar coin here that we'd be looking at if it reached like the market cap of, say, Cardano. So there is some significant upside potential to this. There are some areas where we will get significant support on this on the way up, and they're not that far down. I do think that the upside is is more there is more potential to the upside than the downside on this one currently and that's why i did park some money with this one already now we are trading below the five or below the the is this the 20 again right now let me see ha it is the 20 we are trading beneath the 20 beneath the 50 we are above the five now we were below the five for a while which was represented here let me get rid of the drawings which was represented by this green line we were below it now we got above it now i think we test it about 72, 71, 72 cents, low end of 72. I think we might test that or flag where we currently are and let this come back up. And then we'll go make a run for the 20 day moving average at about currently at 79 cents. We'll slowly conquer that, maybe flag conquer that, come up to the 50 at 83 cents. And then from there on, it's all home free from there because the 200 day is, significant, is significantly below us down at 48 cents, which if I look at my drawings, uh, is significantly below both of my two areas of support there. But you can see this is just straight up where it currently is. I can't see it stopping there, but maybe the 200 could save it on the way down. Anyways, that's all I've got for you today. 
please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a profitable day.